Hello guys, welcome to this session. So let's begin this session. So guys, in this session, we will talk about data visualization using Map.Sys. So what is data visualization? It is the process of presenting data in the form of graphs or charts. It helps us to understand large and complex amounts of data very easily. So guys, if we have any raw amount of data, so before implementing machine learning, we can extract some hidden features, right? or we can uh, just uh, display some amount of information right? to gain some hidden uh, patterns, you can say. Right? So it allows the decision makers to make decisions very uh, efficiently and also allows them in identifying new trends and patterns very easily. So in Python, we have a library that is map.lib. It is an open source library of Python, which is used for data visualization. This library is built on, on, on the top of NumPy arrays, means uh, most of the functions in this library right, are very similar that we have seen in NumPy also. And this library consists of several plots like line, line chart, bar graph, histogram, right, and many others. So for data visualization, we will cover map.lib here. So first we will discuss a very simple line plot, how we can dis uh, how we can display a line. So it is created using a plot function of map.lib. To generate a simple line plot, we need two sequences, right, and that uh, can be in the form of list or tuple or array one for axis x and other for axis y. So in this image, you can see if we have x values and if we have y values, so we can just create a line, right? We can create a line here. Yeah. And each point on this line represent some x value and y value, right? Each point on this line represent x value and y value. So we will cover practically in a while how to create a line using map right? Now let's go ahead and uh, let's discuss the next, which is a scatter plot. The scatter plot, plots are used to observe relationship between variables and use uh, dots to represent the relationship between them. So in this graph, you can see each dot represent here some X value and Y value and here, on x-axis, we are uh, here. We can see we have uh, label weight, and on y-axis, we have label height here. So each dot represents some value of weight and some value of height also. Okay, so this is called a scatter plot. The scatter method in the matplotlib library is used to draw a scatter plot. We will also cover this plot practically in a while. Okay, now let's go ahead and move on the next, that is bar graph. Bar graph we mostly use for categorical columns. So if you want to display some information about any uh, categorical column, we can use bar graph. The bar plots can be plotted horizont horizontally or vertically also. So in matplotlib we have a bar function, right? And in the bar function, we can pass x values, Right. Or we can say uh, labels that we want to display on the x-axis, right? And corresponding values, right? That we pass in the form of frequency, right? For the y-axis. We will also cover practical how we uh, how we can build a bar graph. Let's go ahead and next is histogram. Histogram basically we use for numerical column, right? Bar graph we use for categorical column and histogram we use for numerical column. So it is a graph that shows frequency distribution. And if you want to display the data distribution of a numeric column, we can use histogram. It is a graph showing the number of observation within each given interval. So here you can see in this image, suppose uh, if we take this range 10 to 20, right? So, uh, number of employees represent in this range around 300, right? No, number of employees represent in this range between 10 to 20, around 300, right? And same for the rest. A histogram is a representation of the distribution of numerical data, right? So using histogram, we can display the data distribution. 
of a numerical column. And if we have any categorical column, we can use bar graph. Next, we have subplots. So subplot function in PyPlot module of map.lib library is used to create a figure and a set of subplots. So here you can see in this image, we have a single figure and in a single figure, we can display subplots. So first we have, let's say a plot for square, square root, exponential and log. Right? We can also display some more plots in a single figure. Right? So subplot function in map.library helps in creating multiple layouts of subplots. It provides control over all the individual plots that are created. Okay, now let's uh, move on the practical part. So first we will see how to display a line. So we have some X values, we have some corresponding Y values, right? And this is how we can import matplotlib. If matplotlib is not installed on your system, so there is a simple command that is pip install matplotlib. Matplotlib. Right? So this is a command to install matplotlib. And this is how we can import a matplotlib. So in matplotlib, we have a module pyplot, right? And all the functions, all the methods we have in this pyplot. So import matplotlib.pyplot as plt. Then uh, here we have taken some x values corresponding uh, uh, some y values, right? And we have this function plot. You can see plt.plot. So plot is a function basically, right? To, uh, to create a line on the basis of given x values and y values, right? So here we have passed this sequence x and this sequence y. Then we can set the label, right? We can set the label. Suppose on the x-axis, we want to set a label like a weight, right? Or on the y label, we want to set a label like height, right? And we can also set a title here, right? Let's take line plot. And PLT should basically be used to display the graph. Oh, we start the kernel. Okay, let's restart and kill the output. I don't know why we are getting this error. Okay, let me check. Oh, yeah, are getting spark error. Okay. Uh, in matplotlib, we already have on this. We are getting some error here in this library. Code failed because of fatal error. Error sending has to be request. Okay, uh, let me uh, leave this and shut down. Okay, and uh, open this again. Restart. Okay, instead of Pi, okay, or uh, let's create a new one with Conda Python 3. Let's wait for a few minutes. Okay, so here we can write matplotlib file name and click on the rename okay now let's try to import matplotlib dot pyplot as plt then okay let's now you can see we are getting no error or here yeah. so okay now we can just copy this code x values y values plot function we can set the x level, y level, and we can call plt.show. You can see, now here we have got this graph. So you can see this line, okay? okay. If you want to display the points that represent x level, uh, that represent x value and y value. So I think here we have an option, uh, marker equal to this, you can see. We have four values here. So you can see we have four, four here dots here. One, two, three, four, right? So each dot represent here some X value and Y value, right? Each dot represent here some X value and Y value. So this is how we can create a line using plot function. And uh, using the X level, we can set the level for the X axis and for the Y level and for the Y axis, we can set a level using PL2.py level. So here you can see we are getting the label weight and height, right? So this is how we can set the label. If you want to set the title, we can call this plt.title and we can pass our title here in the form of a string in this function. And you can see we are getting a title here, line plot, right? 
The next we have scatter plot. So using the scatter plot, uh, we can visualize the relationship between two variables. Right? Using scatter plot, we can visualize the relationship between two variables. Okay, uh, so here let's take our uh, data. Okay, so here I'm going to import a CSV file. And first we need to import pandas library pd dot read csv and the file name is uh, iris dot uh, I think we have this file yes iris dot csv and here i must be in uppercase dot csv and the output we can store into some variable let's take df right and df dot head you can see we have here id column sapl length sapl width petal length petal width and a target column also spaces but here uh, we are not going to perform any classification right we want to just display a scatter plot between two variables so here we want to display the relationship between sapl length and sapl width right sapl length and sapl width if you want to rename the columns that we have in the data frame so we can use df dot rename and uh, we can pass here variable columns in the form of dictionary and then old name sample length cm copy this paste it here and colon and then new one we will also pass here but as a value so new one, let's say here sapl length, right? And uh, then let's create another pair and let's rename it also. Second one, sapl width, sapl width, colon, and new name is sapl width. You can see. But if you uh, but if you want to save this change into the data frame, we can use in place option in place equal to true now df dot head you can see sapl and sapl the same thing you can do uh, with other columns okay now we want to display the scatter plot between sapl land and sapl width okay so here let's take x in x we can store all the values of sapl land how we can access this column sapl land df dot sapl land and all the values we want here as an array right so we can use here value same uh let's say we have x1 variable and uh, here let's take x2 variable so df dot sample width dot values now you can see we have x1 as an array similarly we have x2 as an array right now we will okay uh next plt dot scatter so we have a scatter function here right and here we'll pass x1 and then x2 right okay and plt dot and also we want to set the title so plt dot x level so on x axis here we uh, here we want to set the label as sample length and for y axis we want to set the label as sample width you can see the relationship between two variables and in this data you can see we have a target column that is a species and here we have some categories right if you want to see basically uh this iris data set is about flowers data set right in which we have four features and one target column and in the target column, we have three classes, right? Setosa, Versicolor, and Virginica. Okay, I'll show you what is Iris data set. So Iris data set, uh, we can see a most popular data set in the entire machine learning, right? Iris data set. Okay, first uh, you can see in this data set, we have three kinds of flowers, Setosa, Versicolor, and Virginica, right? And each flower has four features, petal length, the petal width, sapl length, and sapl width. Okay. So this is a classification data set that we will discuss also in the further classes. Okay. 
So, so in this data, we have four features, right? Sample length, sample width, pattern length, and pattern width. And we have 150 samples, and we have 50 samples for each class. Here we have three classes. Okay? So this is iris data set. So we want to display the relationship between sample length and sample width. So this is a scatter plot. A scatter plot between sample length and sample width. Okay, uh, next thing uh, that we want to do here, uh, uh, we want to also uh, display here categories, right? Here we have uh, three categories, right? So we want to display here all these categories, right? In different colors here, right? In this, uh, in this scatter plot. So what we have to do, uh, we have to write some code here, okay? Uh, see? x1 x2 comma let's take a color color equal to take red and uh, label equal to let's take a setosa mm -hmm. and here also we have to pass okay instead of this we can write here uh, df or we can take variable x equal to df dot log so here we want all the rows but column we want from one till oh, one two three four five so here we want uh, okay and before this we have to convert this column spaces into a form of numeric so here uh, we can use here map method df dot df dot spaces dot map and uh, we can pass a dictionary here okay and df dot species dot value counts you can see here we have three categories so citosa we want to map as zero this we want to map as zero we have to pass the full name so iris citosa iris citosa Okay, and uh, then we want to map iris reversi color, iris reversi color with another unique integer one. Okay, and uh, then we want to map iris reversi nika with the uh, unique integer with two. Okay, and uh, then the output here we want to store into the same column df and this species. Yes. Okay, and equal to. Uh, if you run this again, you can see here we are getting 0, 1, 2. So 0 means Setosa, 1 means Vashi color, and 2 means Vashi color. Okay, now here we want to, uh, in X, we want all the columns, all the features, and also the target column. So we can pass here slicing for the columns, one column, and the end point will not pass here because here. Uh, we want all the columns after index one and also dot values. Okay, now here we can pass X, select all the rows, not all the rows, uh, X. Okay, and uh, one more thing we have to declare here, variable Y, Y equal to DF dot species dot values, use this one. You can see in Y basically we have corresponding values 0 1 and 2 so here we can pass we can pass a condition if y equal to 0 and uh, the column we want to display that is at index 0 then for the y axis and x here should be in upper case okay then x y equal to 0 comma 1 you can see we are getting red so all the here dots we are getting as a red, right? So these dots represent, these are the Setosa samples, right? These are the Setosa samples. Similarly, we want to display here Varshi color and Varshinka. So let's copy this and paste it here. And the class is one, class is one. We can take a different color here, green, and the label that we want to display here, Let's just copy this. What was Okay, and uh, 
then copy this one also and paste it we can also run a follow-up here okay to avoid the repetition color we can take a different color here and this time we can pass here maybe in virginia okay and one more thing uh let's take here plt dot listen okay let's run this let's see what will the output here so now you can see so in this scatter plot now you can see a uh, three different colors setosa red colors washi color green and virgin blue. so all the red dot all the red dots belongs to category setosa right all the green dots belongs to category washi color all the blue dots belongs to virgin so if we perform classification here right if we perform classification here we will get so many misclassified samples right misclassified samples between versicular and virginica because the samples of versicular and virginica are very close to each other right are very close to each other right so we cannot perform a well classification between versicular and virginica right so instead of for sample land and sample with uh, let's take another variables pattern length and pattern width right pattern length and pattern width so let's copy this and paste it here instead of zero and one we can take two and three index two and three here we are passing index two and three so at index two we have pattern length at index three we have pattern width now we want to display the uh, relationship between pattern length and pattern width. Okay. Now you can see. So if we perform classification between all these three classes, so uh, here we will get a uh, few misclassified samples, right? Few misclassified samples between Citosa, or oh, sorry, between Versicolor and Vachinka. Right. We can also uh, we can easily find a straight line here. Right? but a uh, few samples may be misclassified here right uh, at this point right at this point so on the basis of scatter plot we can say uh, pattern length and pattern width pattern length and pattern width are important columns as compared to sample length and sample width right pattern length and pattern width we can just compare the graph here we have taken sample length and sample width if we do here classification right on the basis of sample length and sample width so here we will get so many misclassified samples because the samples of virginica and versicular are very close to each other but in this case here you will find here we will get very few misclassified samples right as compared to this one so in short we can say pattern length and pattern width pattern length and pattern width are are important features right these are the features are important features as compared to as compared to sample length and sample width right so this conclusion basically uh, uh we have got after this scatter plot so on the basis of this scatter plot we can say pattern length and pattern width are important features as compared to sample length and sample width right so this is the use of data visualization okay so sometimes after visualization uh, we can get the important features also okay we can read our data more effectively after data visualization so this is a scatter plot now let's uh, display here bar graph so for bar graph here uh, so the next is bar graph so bar graph basically used for categorical column okay so Next, here I'm going to this. Uh, I'm going to read another CSV file. Okay, so pd dot read CSV, and the file is movies dot CSV. Df one equal to df one dot head. So here we have few columns: the star rating, title, content rating, genre, duration, actor list. Now we are here we have a, a categorical column that is genre because in this column we have some predefined categories. I'll show you uh, what are unique categories in this column genre. So df1 dot df1 dot genre dot dot value counts. You can see in this data we have two segmented movies 
that belongs to genre drama, 156 comedy, 136 action and so on. Okay. But this information we want to display here. And here we can use bar graph. Okay. So bar graph we can use for categorical. So here we have some categories, right? And here we have their counts. So we can use plt dot bar graph. Plt dot bar. This is a function in matplotlib. So first here we have to pass labels, right? Unique labels that we want to display on x-axis, and then we have to pass their counts, right? Or frequencies. So labels. How we can get labels here? Uh, so we can do one thing. Uh, if we use here zero, not zero. Uh, if we use here dot index, you can see we are getting here labels, right? So labels we can use here labels equal to and corresponding values or counts we can store here. So df1 dot journal dot value counts dot values, right? So here you can take variable name counts. Here you can see what we have in values or in not in value counts. Right. So here we have counts, right? And in the labels, we have unique labels. Right. So here first we can pass labels and then we can pass counts. Right. And uh PLT dot show. So this is a bar graph, but here you can see we are getting uh, some kind of overlapping on x-axis. So okay, uh, we can display a horizontal bar. So let's try with bar h, bar h. Now you can see. Okay, and uh, next we can also increase the figure. So we can use plt dot figure, and here we can use figure size. We can pass argument. Here, figure size, and uh, in the form of tuple, we can pass here, let's say, uh, 8, comma, etc. Right? But if we use only bar function, we will get the vertical. You can see. So if you want to increase the, uh, here, we can increase the width in, uh, instead of height. So let's take a 16 comma 6. Now you can see here, we you can also increase some more with 18 comma 6. Hey, okay, you can see. So uh, we have drama movies around uh, 260, we can say, like right, 260 or 265. We have comedy movies around 150, right, or 155 around, right, and so on. So this is bar graph. So bar graph used for categorical columns okay. next we have histogram so histogram we use to display the data distribution of a numeric column okay we have column star rating here duration okay let's display the distribution of this column duration so df dot uh, sorry df1 dot duration df1 df1 dot duration if we run this this is how we can access a column here. And uh, for histogram, we can use plt dot hist. And we can pass here df1 dot duration. df1 dot duration and plt dot. Okay, here we are getting histogram. So histogram shows the data distribution. But here uh, we can make this graph more clear okay, by using an argument that is number of bins number of bins let's say if we take number of bins uh, one what will happen so if we take number of bins one so all the information of the data here we have got inside one rectangular bar right one rectangle bar right so on the basis of this graph we cannot extract any hidden information right we cannot extract any hidden information so we can just increase this value. So let's take a uh, number of bins equal to 50. Now you can see some uh, some information more clear. Right? So we have uh, some movies that have duration around 230 or 240. Right? 230 or 240. 
but most of the movies right most of the movies have duration between uh, 100 and 1 to 5 by right? 100 and 125 right between 100 and 125 we have lots of movies here and we have lots of movies here but here we have a few movies right that we have around 230 right that we have around duration 230 right so such kind of information we can extract using histogram okay next let's use here a uh, subplot so i'm going to copy this so in subplot we can uh, display multiple plots inside a single figure or inside the same figure so here we need some data so using numpy we can create data and put dot linear space so linear space basically we use to create an array right and first argument is the starting point and this is the end point and this is the number of elements that we want right so in the output array we will get the 100 elements and all the elements will be between this range right one two ten and uh, then we can convert each uh, each element of this array right in the form of log we can use this loss or uh, log function and then we can display the data so plt or subplot in the subplot function we can pass number of rows number of columns and the subplot number means uh sorry we can say plot number okay and this is plot number one this is plot number two so first uh in the figure we want to display the information about this x comma y right we want to display the information about x comma y and then so here we can you know, remove this title and uh, we can simply so we have some x values and we have some y values so okay uh, so y equal to yes y equal to log of x right here so here we are trying to display x and the log values and in the second subplot we are trying here to display x and the square of each log values right so if you run this you can see we are getting two subplots this is subplot one this is subplot two right this is y equal to log of x and this is y equal to log of x and then square similarly if you want to display some more subplot in the same figure right here you can just add some more code right you can just but uh, but here uh, but here you have to also change the number of rows right because currently in this uh, figure we have one figure and two columns right number of rows and number of columns so currently we have one row and two columns right after that we have to change this value okay you can see in the next uh, example we have four subplots we have four subplots so x this and um, we can set the figure size figure this is figure one and uh, this is two comma two comma one we have number of rows two we want number of columns two it means the total subplot we want a four and this is the subplot number one linear this plot x comma x and then cubic and then log and this exponential right so this is subplot one this is subplot two subplot three and subplot four and uh, basically there is no need to mention the figure, figure two let's run this you can see we, uh, we have got four subplots linear cubic log and exponential right so this is an example of subplot so data visualization we use to extract some hidden patterns right to extract some hidden patterns from the raw data okay guys so uh, i think it is enough for today's session right in the next session we will talk about machine learning. So we will cover machine learning using scikit-learn and also we will cover some inbuilt algorithm of AWS SageMaker. Okay guys, so let's wind up this session, right? And let's meet in the next class. Thank you guys.